Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, please order my steps in your word right here, right now. I need you to strengthen me, to guide me, and I ask that you speak through me, Lord. Help me to bring glory to your name, for you're truly worthy, Lord. I love you and I praise you for it's in Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen. Psalm 119, 105 to 112 reads, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much, preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. I don't know about you, but if there's been one thing that I've learned over the course of my life is that it has been seasoned with many concerns, challenges, and uncertainties. Truth be told, none of us have it all together regardless of what our actions might suggest. There have been times in my life when I just didn't know where to turn or what to do. I know that there has to be somebody out there who knows what I'm talking about. There's no reason for any of us to be ashamed. You can be a believer in Christ and still struggle with this thing called life. God did not create us to have all the answers. Instead, he has created us with a void that can only be filled by him. During these times, We must go to the word for wisdom and insight. The psalm writer reminds us that the word of God is able to provide us with the necessary guidance that we need to make it through those tough times in life. Verse 105 of the text reminds us that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. A light of any type brightens the area where it is lit, and the surrounding area as well, up to a certain distance based on the limitations of that particular light or lamp. Not all bulbs are created to perform in the same manner. God's word will provide believers with the wisdom that is necessary to maneuver in in every situation so that we'll be able to take the next step in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through. He may not give you the whole picture all at once, but you can believe that he is able to empower you so that you can keep moving forward despite the tests. The word of God is able to provide direction. The word of God is able to provide us and help us to live lives that are is pleasing to the Lord. Help me, Jesus. The word of God is able to provide the peace, comfort, and understanding in the midst of the storms of life. Perhaps this past year has been one of, that has been full of many challenges for you. Maybe the past three years of this pandemic has been extremely overwhelming for you, to the point that you have lost the state of your mind and and suffered greatly. But in spite of all of it, God has been there. Through it all, God has been present. He knows you, and he knows what you're going through. Psalm 139, 1 through 4 states, O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Psalm 46, 1 states, our God is a refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. He knows all about us. 
He knows how we feel. He knows when our hearts are heavy and burdened with the cares of this world. He is willing and able to help us in our times of need. We must be committed to the word. In verse 106, the psalmist commits to follow the principles and guidelines that are presented in the word of God. Because he has come to an understanding of the significance of doing so. He is committed to stay the course regardless of the requirements of such a promise. He knows that in the long run he will be better off as he yields and follows to the guidelines that are set forth in the word of God. As believers in Christ, we must commit to spending time in, the, in his word daily. The word of God, the Holy Spirit, and the vehicle of prayer is able to mold us into the men and women that God created us to be. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We must be willing to tell God what's on our heart. In verse 107, the psalmist takes a moment to express how he really feels by reflecting on what he's been through. He says, I have suffered much. Sometimes we have to be willing to tell the Lord how we really feel. Lord, this past year, this past three years have been really tough. Preserve my life according to your word. I need you, Lord. I can't make it without you. Please protect my heart and my mind. Help me to fill my heart with your word. Help me to taste and see that the Lord is good. We must remember to give God the praise. Much like the psalmist, we have had our shares in ups and downs. Life hasn't always been peachy creamy. But in spite of what we've been through, in spite of what we're going through right now, we must give God the praise that he so greatly deserves and desires. We've got to praise him for his goodness. We've got to praise him for his mercy. We've got to praise him for his grace. Teach me how to be obedient to your word, O oh Lord. Teach me how to rely and depend on you at all times. Teach me how to be more like Jesus in my everyday life. Teach me how to praise you even during those difficult times when it's not so easy to do so. We must admit our shortcomings. The psalmist admits that he constantly takes his life in his own hands. If we, truly, if we can truly be honest with ourselves... There have been many times in which we have chosen to handle the circumstances of life on our own instead of trusting and relying on the Lord. The importance of getting the word of God in our heart is stressed here as we see that the psalmist declares that he will not forget the word, although at times he has fallen short of God's will, and he knows and admits his shortcomings. It is important that we make a point to ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, help me to be the man or the woman of God that you call me to be. We must hold on to the word. Regardless of what might come our way, you have to trust that God can handle whatever it is that you're going through. No matter what people might say about you, no matter what the doctor's report might say, no matter what, you might be going, what might be going on at home, at work, on the job, no matter what might be going on in your relationship or, or lack thereof, God knows that and he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. <laughs> Hold on to the promises of God which are found in his word. He has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31 states, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The hymn writer got it right when he said, hold to God's unchanging hand. No matter what you're going through, stay in the word and hold to God's unchanging hand. We must remember that God is faithful. The psalmist states, your statues are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your degrees to the very end. The word of God should bring joy to our hearts, so much so that we hide in our hearts. We hide it in our hearts so that 
when the storms of life come our way, and they will, we'll be able to persevere knowing that the Lord is on our side. Put your trust in the one who is able because he loves you, he cares for you, and he is faithful. Amen.